The primary flight display is normally located on the outboard display units. The PFD presents a dynamic color display of all parameters necessary for flight path control. Indications on the PFD are airspeed, attitude, altitude, vertical speed, and heading track information. Flight mode enunciations and AFDS status are displayed here. These and other indications are discussed in later lessons. PFD data sources include the Air Data Inertial Reference System, the Flight Management System, and the Autopilot Flight Director System. This lesson covers these primary indications. We'll start by looking at the airspeed indication. The airspeed indication is a moving tape that displays current indicated airspeed at all times. 30 knots is the lowest indicated value. Current Mach is displayed at air speeds greater than 0.4 Mach. A speed trend vector shows predicted air speed in 10 seconds based on the current acceleration or deceleration rate. Selected speed and the selected speed bug correspond to the FMS target speed when using VNAV or the current IAS Mach window setting. The MCP and IAS mock controls are located on the glare shield. The IAS mock selector changes the window setting, selected speed readout, and bug position. When the selected speed is off scale, the partially hidden bug is parked at the top or bottom of the tape. The IAS mock reference switch changes the displays from IAS to mock. Push the IAS mock reference switch. The display toggles from IAS at air speeds greater than 0.4 mock. Now let's look at air speed items controlled through the FMS. During preflight, the no V speed flag is displayed until takeoff reference speeds are entered through the CDU. The takeoff reference page shows calculated takeoff reference speeds. The speeds are selected for PFD display with these line select keys. Push each of the line select keys, then note the airspeed indication display. The no V speed flag is removed after all three speeds are selected. Now set V2 in the IAS mock window while the takeoff reference page speeds are still in view. Since all speed values are currently off scale, a parked V1 is shown above its associated value. As speed increases, Individual reference speed bugs display and move with the air speed tape. The V1 and VR bugs are removed after liftoff. The V2 bug remains displayed until flap retraction is initiated. Flap maneuvering speeds are displayed below 20,000 feet to assist the flight crew with flap operation. The bugs indicate maneuvering speed for the current flap setting and the next retracted flap setting. Prior to descent, a landing flaps setting and landing reference speed should be selected on the approach reference page. Select flaps 30 on the CDU. Now transfer the flap setting and associated speed to the flap speed line to display the speed on the PFD. Since the landing reference speed value is off scale, a parked ref is shown above its associated value. As speed decreases, the landing reference speed bug displays and moves with the airspeed tape. Landing flaps are now set. Set VREF plus 5 knots in the IAS mock window. Maximum speed indicates current maximum speed as limited by VMO-MMO 
gear or flap placard speed. Minimum maneuvering speed indicates the maneuver margin to the stick shaker or low speed buffet. Minimum speed indicates the air speed at which stick shaker activation occurs. At higher altitudes with high gross weight, a maximum maneuvering speed may be displayed. It indicates the maneuver margin to high speed buffet. Next, we'll discuss a few of the items displayed on the attitude indication. The 777 attitude indication is like other attitude indicators, but with enhancements to some items. The bank pointer indicates bank relative to the bank scale. At bank angles beyond 35 degrees, the pointer fills and turns amber until bank is reduced. A slip skid indication is located beneath the bank pointer. With large deflections, the indication fills until the slip or skid is reduced. A pitch limit indication, or PLI, shows the pitch angle at which stick shaker occurs based on current flight conditions. The PLI displays automatically any time flaps are not in the up position or any time airspeed is close to stick shaker speed even with flaps up. Other displays in this area are covered in the second PFD lesson. Now let's look at the altitude indication. The altitude indication is also a moving tape that displays current barometric altitude. During pre-flight, the landing altitude flag is displayed until an origin airfield is entered on the route page. After entering the origin, a landing altitude indication replaces the flag. The indication is set to the departure airport or runway altitude until the airplane is 400 nautical or halfway to the destination, whichever occurs first. After that, the landing altitude indication is set to the destination airport or runway altitude. A landing altitude reference bar extends 1,000 feet above the indication. The bar is amber from 0 to 500 feet and white from 500 to 1,000 feet. An AFDS barometric source indication shows which pilot is providing corrected barometric altitude to the system. The indication is removed if both flight director switches are off and the autopilots are disengaged. The indication matches whichever flight director switch is turned on first, but always shows L whenever both switches are on. In flight, the indication matches whichever autopilot engage switch is pushed first. Selected altitude and the selected altitude bug correspond to the current MCP altitude window setting. The altitude selector changes the window setting, selected altitude readout, and bug. When the selected altitude is off scale, the partially hidden bug is parked at the top or bottom of the tape. Set 25,000 feet for climb out. Only selected altitude is controlled through the MCP. Other altitude related indications are controlled through the EFIS control panel. These controls are used with the PFD. The meters switch displays metric altitudes on the altitude indication. Push the meters switch. Metric displays are available for current and selected altitudes. Push the meters switch again to remove the display. The barometric reference selector is used to switch the barometric reference between inches of mercury and hectopascals. The barometric selector controls the barometric setting. The selector has slow and fast slew positions and is spring-loaded to center. The slow position increments in hundredths of an inch, or one hectopascal. Fast slew increments in tenths of an inch, 
or 10 hectopascals. The slew rate accelerates the longer the selector is held in the same position. Rotate the selector to set to 9.82 inches. During climb, an amber alert is displayed if the local altimeter remains set after climbing above the transition altitude. Transition altitude is displayed on the climb page. The barometric standard switch selects the standard barometric setting. Push the barometric standard switch. Notice that standard is now displayed and the alert condition removed. When standard is displayed, a local altimeter setting can be pre-selected by rotating the barometric selector. The pre-selected setting is shown here in the current barometric reference units. Pre-select a setting of 1016 hectopascals. The barometric reference selector should be set to hectopascals before rotating the barometric selector. Touch the highlighted areas. Touch the highlighted areas. During descent, an amber alert is displayed if standard remains set after descending below the transition level. Transition level is displayed on the descent forecast page. Push the barometric standard switch to change the barometric setting. When a pre-selected setting is present, it becomes the new barometric setting and replaces standard. Without a pre-selected setting, the last setting before standard was selected is redisplayed. The altitude indication also allows the use of QFE or field elevation settings during takeoff and landing. QFE mode is activated on the approach reference page with this line select key. The currently active mode is shown in large green letters. Now select QFE mode. QFE displays next to the barometric setting. The attention box displays for 10 seconds. Notice the altitude tape background turns green. The landing altitude reference moves to zero feet and the barometric setting does not automatically change. The correct QFE value must be set manually. Set QFE at 2980 inches. During climb or descent alerts, the QFE also changes color. Push the barometric standard switch. When standard is selected, a smaller QFE displays next to the pre-select line. Notice the tape background changes to gray. Now let's return to QNH use. Select QNH mode. QNH and the attention box are displayed for only 10 seconds after activating QNH mode. Again, the barometric setting must be set to the correct QNH. The last topic to discuss is the vertical speed indication. Current vertical speed is indicated by a vertical speed pointer against a scale. When vertical speed exceeds 400 feet per minute, up or down, a digital readout displays above or below the scale. Controls for vertical speed are located on the MCP. This switch engages vertical speed mode. Push the vertical speed flight path angle switch. The current vertical speed is now indicated in the window. A selected vertical speed bug is also displayed at the current MCP setting. The bug remains displayed as long as vertical speed is engaged. This completes the instruction section of the lesson. All of your pre-flight performance data entries are completed. Now, set the takeoff reference speed bugs on the PFD. Now, set the selected airspeed to V2. You have been cleared to descend to 4,000 feet. 
pre-select the local altimeter of 30.02. Select the pre-selected setting for use.